on the road again Just can't wait to get on the road again Life I love is making music with my friends and I can't wait to get on the road again On the road again Going places that I've never been Seeing things that I may never see again And I can't wait to get on the road again Ah, there's so much truth in that. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Dulce America. My name is Bing Futch. Thank you very much for joining me. We've been having a great time this year talking about music theory. And a lot of people don't like music theory because it's a scary, scary subject for a lot of people. It's like a new language. And, you know, the older you get, the harder I think it is. Well, it's been proven. It's very much harder to soak in new things like languages. But music is in us. We were built. We were born with music inside of us, and it doesn't take long to activate it and make it a part of our natural everyday lifestyle. So I'm going to show that to you today as we work even more with chord progressions, and today we'll be talking about using non-native chords in very standard chord progressions, like that one by Willie Nelson, On the Road Again. Now, I've got tons of stuff just like this, not only with over 428 episodes of Dulce America, I've, I'm losing count every single week about how many episodes we've done, but um, I've got all kinds of stuff teaching this basic uh, concept from books, from videos, to tablature, to lessons I do every single week, and all of those are available through Patreon. Now, Patreon is kind of like, uh, like a subscription service where you can just pay $5 a month and get access to everything. This is a model that's been happening all over the place. Hulu, Netflix, uh, Disney is getting into it with Disney+. Plus, and this is a really neat thing that Patreon has done for a lot of different artists around the world. And uh, for $5 a month, you can get my archives downloaded for free. That is all of my books, CDs, tablature, video, all, it's all yours for $5 a month. And beyond that, I'm creating new stuff every single week. In fact, I create things specifically for my patrons where they have questions about playing the mountain dulcimer, ukulele, Native American flute. I simply make a video and it goes right out to everybody uh, to enjoy and to hopefully to benefit from. If this sounds like something you might be interested in, please come on down here and take a look at patreon.com slash bingfutch. Go to the featured tag section, click on open house and see there how many amazing bits of information you can get and download absolutely free no requirement you don't have to sign up just download it enjoy it and if you do have a great time with it please do consider becoming a patron and joining us all here because my patrons help to produce Dulce America as well as keep everything running here at the studio so I can continue to make things happen for your development on whatever instrument you're playing thank you all my patrons you guys are the bomb all right, so let's talk about this song today. We've been talking about chord progressions, and we've been talking about all native chords, all naturally occurring chords for every single scale. In every single key that we play, we've got seven notes, and we can build chords off of every single one of those notes using that particular note as the root of a chord. And if we use the hop, skip, and jump method using those seven notes of the scale, to actually name what the notes are inside of the chords, start with the note you want to build a chord off of, then skip over the next chord uh, note and pick that note, add it to your chord, skip over the next note, and where you land, you add that last note to your three note chord. You can do that with major chords, minor chords, and diminished chords all right there inside of that seven note scale. But there's a lot more uh, we have in the way of options in the music world, we can actually add notes and chords that are not native to that key. And that creates a lot of really interesting stuff at the same time that it could create a bit of a train wreck if you're not exactly sure how all that stuff works. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you a great demonstration on that today using this wonderful tune, On the Road Again by Willie Nelson. First of all, we are looking at D major. So our scale is going to be D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. And then the chords built off of those notes are going to be three major chords, D, G, and A, three minor chords, E minor, F sharp minor, and B minor, and one diminished chord that's going to be C sharp diminished. On the road again, 
If we do it in the key of D, the first chord is going to be D. Now, what's happening on this second chord is the melody note is going to F sharp. But what Willie has done here is he's not sticking with the chords that are in the key of D major. He's not going to play an F sharp minor chord there. He is going to play an F sharp major chord. We can't play F sharp major because we don't have all the stuff necessary to make it happen. We're going to play an F sharp 5 chord. We talked about that in the last episode. A 5 chord is a bar chord when you're tuned in DAD on the mountain dulcimer. We have a 1-5-8 tuning. That's the first note of the scale on the bass string, the fifth note of the scale on the middle string, and the octave above the bass string on the melody string. So we have D, A, and D. A D major chord, a root, a third, and a fifth, is D, F sharp, and A. There's no F sharp, there's no third in this configuration of strings. So that means that by dropping the third entirely, that we can use the bar chords as both major and minor chords depending on the root. So if I just bar at the second fret, I'm not going to have a distracting minor third interval by playing the 2-2-4. Two, two, I'm also not going to have the major third interval. I'm simply going to have this bar and it's going to work just fine. On the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Next chord is E minor. The life I love is making music with my friends. Then it goes to G. I can't wait, A major, to get on the road again. Let's do that again. On the road again. F sharp five at the second fret. Going places that I've never been. E minor, seeing things that I may never see again. G. I can't wait, A, to get on the road again. That's the first part of the tune. Then we go off into the middle part of the song. We're going to start off with G. On the road again, like a band of gypsies, we go down the highway. Go back to D, and then back to G. We're the best of friends, and insisting that the world keeps turning our way. Go back to D. And then five, our five chord A, and our way. And then back to the chorus. On the road again, F sharp five. Just can't wait to get on the road again. E minor, the life I love is making music with my friends. G, and I can't wait to get on A, the road again. If you're playing the melody, it's pretty easy to find. But one of the things he does with the melody is also a uh, accidental. In the key of D major, we're using F sharp. And so far, we haven't broken that rule. But at one point, melody-wise, Willie takes the melody down to F natural and back up again. You can kind of skirt past that by going like this. by going all the way down to E from F sharp and going a whole step down as opposed to going the half step. So if you don't have the one and a half fret, it's not a big deal. But if you do have the one and a half fret and you want to play an instrumental version of this, then you'll want to go down a half step like this. Then it goes down to the E the second time, but the first time he dips down from the F sharp he actually goes down to F natural, goes down a half step. And then. And then I might go here. On the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. The life I love is making music with my friends. I can't wait to get on the road again. Now, 
we were talking about chord progressions and how you can throw things in there to really help the tension and release situation. And if you have the one and a half fret, you have the ability to throw in a C natural on the middle string when you're playing a D chord, and that's going to give you a D7 or a dominant seventh chord. A dominant seventh chord is a major chord that has a fourth note added to the other three notes, and that fourth note is the flatted seventh of the associated scale. So we have to first look at the chord we're playing, which is D major, which means that we're working with the D major scale. We have to go to the seventh note of that scale, C sharp, and then take it down a half step, flatten it, and make it C natural, and that is how you get a dominant seventh chord. So we've got the ability to play two, one and a half open. And that dominant seventh, that seventh, uh, flat at seventh degree in there, is very powerful. And if we simply go to the four chord, watch what happens with these two notes. We want them to travel not a very far distance. We want them to go just a fret away if we can possibly make it happen. And look at what happens when I go from D7 to G. Is that not satisfying or what? That is really a nice, nice voicing between those two chords and a nice progression from tension to release. So a good place to use your D7 chord is when you're going from the one chord to the four chord, which is G major. So in terms of uh, going from the chorus to the bridge of the tune, uh, I can't wait to get on the road again. Throw that D7 in there before you go to G for the bridge. I can't wait to get on the road again. On the road again. Like a band of gypsies, we go down the highway. We're the best of friends. And insisting that the world keeps turning our way, a and our way, on the road again. Just can't wait to get on the road again. Life I love is making music with my friends. And I can't wait to get on the road again. And I can't wait to get on the road again. So there is an example on how you can take a scale in a key and still introduce elements from outside of that and make something a little bit different than what you've been hearing and playing with these naturally occurring chords. This is but the tip of the iceberg, my friends, because it does get so much deeper and much more complex. But again, my aim this year has been to focus on fundamentals and give you a really, really good look at how all this stuff works because throughout the year, of course, I'll be showing you a lot more stuff that you can do and incorporate into your music. So I hope this has been helpful. Please, please do review these episodes we've been doing so far because uh, I, the reason I'm doing this real quickly right now is uh, uh, we have our Florida Gulf Coast Dulcimer Retreat and we also have our Castaway Music Cruise. So these episodes were shot early in February and then when I get back from the cruise, I'll be shooting some more episodes. And based on your feedback, I want to find out where you want to go next. Do you want to stay in the music theory trail or do you want to get into some song demonstrations and some rhythm exercises and other stuff? I'm kind of leaning towards a bit of a break from the music theory and doing some different stuff. So let me know what you would like to hear. Drop me a line at bingfutch at yahoo.com. Also, don't forget, if you want to download all kinds of righteous goodies, make sure you go to patreon.com slash bingfutch. Featured tag section, click the open house link, download to your heart's content, and if you'd like to join up and become a patron, I would welcome that very, very, very much. Thanks, patrons. Thanks to all of you who are watching, and we will see you next time here on Dulce America. <laughs>